All right, perfect. Headlines read, Finland ranks number one on the World Happiness Report 2021. Is anyone here surprised? Probably not, given the series of past events and practices from Nordic countries, such accomplishments are considered normal. However, the following headlines might seem like a subtle Asian joke, but they do raise questions. Why not number one? Singapore's 27th position on the World Happiness Report draws mixed reactions, and Thailand's happiness ranking unchanged in global report at 61. While certain countries, those uh, co um, whose COVID-related travel restrictions have been removed, have risen on the list. So is this list biased, biased towards people's judgment or really towards a real representation of happiness? These interesting titles and articles call for a further investigation into the ranking methodology, as well as the implications of happiness on the ethicality of business. Thus, in this pr uh, presentation, we'll focus on four uh, main topics. What influences happiness? Is the index real? How do current practices and beliefs fit with famous philosophers? And some examples of ethical businesses in Thailand and Finland. Firstly, I would like to cover a few facts and figures uh, about the two countries, uh, which can allow for a better discussion. Uh, firstly, investigating Finland's and Thailand's ideologies to better understand the reason for the difference. Finland has somewhat of a right-leaning economy, uh, which ensures adequate welfare of all citizens. While Thailand is somewhat of a left-leaning economy as it, as, it, as it is undergoing rapid industrialization. The population density of Finland is relatively much lower to Thailand. Uh, like most Asian countries, uh, Thailand is a lot more densely populated. This difference is crucial because in most developed countries, due to better living standards and societal habits, people are usually less worried uh, uh, financially, as well as they tend to explore their dreams as they are relatively free to do so. And this decreases people's greed for money and rather uh, allows them to focus on preserving resources and being ethical in terms of providing better working conditions for all, as well as uh, making uh, better products for both consumer and nature. Now exploring the factors that make up this index, it can be discovered that people's perception of corruption, generosity, social support, GDP per capita and other similar factors are considered for deriving the conclusion regarding their happiness. However, in my belief, this index is not an accurate representation since cultures and society change, the value of the weightage of these measurements change, and such factors are not really accounted for. An example of this would be that in the Asian culture, accumulated wealth matters more than current income, so GDP per capita might be a debatable topic. And also the Asian cultures usually derive a lot of happiness uh, by spending time with their family as well as celebrating cultural events throughout the year. This can be further understood with Aristotle's theory, where he compares in intrinsic and instrumental value. Here, I would like to give an example of, of a reaction upon receiving a gift that is not expensive, but is rather more heartfelt and thoughtful. Also, uh, before I get into that, I would like to clear that the following discussion about the countries related to the topic are, are acting as a mere reference based on the topic of Thailand and Finland, and I do not mean to offend or generalize any country or culture. As per the current practices of happiness, Aristotle eudaimonia can be reached by any individual upon getting a more expensive gift, which is inaccurate to what humans have been in the past. And also it is contrary to Aristotle's beliefs. Therefore in so societies such as Thailand, where people uh, relatively struggle uh, financially compared to Finland, usually prefer instrumental value over intrinsic value uh, uh, compared to countries such as Finland. Uh, in contrast to the World Happiness Report, uh, the country and the people of Bhutan from Aristotle's perspective would probably be considered in the state of Odemonia. Uh, even though we know that the people from Bhutan uh, are nowhere close to experiencing the best in class medical facilities or economic conditions, they appear to be one of the most happiest people in the world. And this has to do a lot with the facade of perception of happiness that humans have built over the years. And surprisingly, it still uh, keeps evolving to become worse. Therefore, uh, in Aristotle's jargon, um, I would like to explain this uh, in the following words. Due to such practices, humans are losing the essence of life to the pleasure of capitalism and industrialization instead of long lasting happiness and vision. So now exploring how these apply to businesses and what benefits they create for both business and the society. Uh, one of the best examples is Google, where they, where they understand the importance of practicing happiness in current business as it affects the motivation of the employees as well as, their, uh, as well as the employee experience with the company. Recently during Ramadan, uh, Google and its offices identified employees who were fasting and made sure to prepare meals in accordance with their religion's guidelines 
to promote inclusivity and promote a behavior and practice within the company, which is economically sustainable, environmentally sustainable, and also helps reduce discrimination amongst races and religions. And this extends not just within the company, but to the society as years go by. Uh, I would also like to give examples of Thai companies such as Xena that sell natural products and DTGO, which ensures to add a value in every step of their business for the good. They operate in all different sectors that you can imagine. While in Finland, uh, there are less, lesser social issues, stricter government regulations, and people are generally already satisfied uh, with their uh, social and financial life. Therefore, businesses can shift their focus towards newer aspects, which promote sustainability and uh, scientific development at a visible level. Neste is a Finnish company which produces clean aviation and road fuel, as well as renewable chemicals and plastics, which reduces pollution generation at a significant pace, thus making a real difference. Therefore, in conclusion, not only wealth, corruption levels, and life expectancy increases ethicality, but there are other factors such as society, competition, or maybe even such as population density, um, identifying the essence of life that humans had before industrialization, the social ethos and government regulations, which make a lot of difference to countries' ethical practices, uh, which leads to increased happiness in the long run and better businesses. So that will be it for my presentation and I would, I'm open to any and all questions.